Hey, happy new year. I can't believe it is already 2024. That is crazy to me. Um, but as my therapist and I were talking about, uh, prepping for the new year, one of the things that we're doing is we're setting goals for therapy for the coming year, which I think is brilliant. I'm so grateful that that's sort of the mindset that my therapist has is having me set goals for my own progress and growth in the new year, because, you know, it'd be easy enough for her to say, okay, like I know what you need to do next, or, um, you know, just kind of let me go along the paths I've been going, but I actually have this opportunity to stop and reflect on the progress that I've made throughout the year and set some goals going forward that are going to stretch me a little bit. Um, one of the things when we were talking about it is I said something about reflecting at the end of the year, because I think that that is one of the great things about setting new year's resolutions. Um, I think one of the bad things about setting new year's goals or setting new year's resolutions is that I think a lot of us are already primed to assume that they're going to fail. We've done them before. We've heard the statistics. Um, and so that always makes me a little bit sad because, um, it feels a lot more like an uphill battle than if you just sort of set a goal throughout the middle of the year, because nobody, there's not the same amount of like pressure. Um, and nobody's saying like, Oh, we'll give it two months and then you'll fail. New year's resolutions sort of have this not so great reputation for not being kept. And, you know, in a lot of cases that reputation is well-deserved because we just set a bunch of resolutions that we're not going to be able to keep. But if you go about setting them the right way, and I'll link to one of the videos that I've made on this already in the description, but if you go about setting them the right way, you do actually have a really good chance. And the new year is a really powerful um, time because you're naturally reflecting on the year that's gone, thinking about the year to come. You have hopes and dreams that um, you hope come to fulfillment in that year. And so it's just a very natural time for you to be thinking about those things and making those resolutions. So when I mentioned the reflection piece, talking to my therapist, she said, that's really important. And then serendipitously, I checked my email and I had this email from Sahil Bloom about his process for the personal annual review that he does every year. And I've never done one of these, but I wanted to try it. And so I figured might as well turn on the camera and take you along. So let's go. I'm going to go through some of what I covered in this annual review process, and I'll probably be adding to this over the next few days. Um, but I thought one of the things he did really well in this email was he went through all the questions and sort of explained what his answers were for the year. Um, and so I thought I could go ahead and do that too, because I feel like um, going through this and then comparing answers with uh, somebody else is actually really fun because you're able to go like, oh, okay, I hadn't thought about that. That's a really cool thing that you thought of or learned um, this year. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and go through the questions that he has here that I answered. And um, then I'll give some thoughts on the process overall. So the first question is, what did I change my mind on this year? I have like four things here. I'm not going to read every single thing, but one of the things is that life isn't best when it's most productive. It's best when you have the time and mental capacity for the things and people that matter most. Um, that's been a huge mental shift for me over this past year. I definitely thought before this that if I could just make myself work uh, perfectly efficiently, then I would be satisfied with my life because I would be able to get everything done. And what I've thankfully realized this year is that is not the game that I want to be playing. That's not a game where I end up winning. Um, because the moment where I figure out how to get everything done is the moment that more things creep in. Another one for me, and this one has come through therapy, a lot of work there is that emotions are there to help me, not to harm me. Um, God gave them to me for a reason because before I always thought that emotions were like at best a distraction and at worst just like wrong. Like we didn't, I needed to ignore them. And that's a journey I've been on for, for the past few years, but I feel like that particular mindset shift really happened this year because I hadn't, I wouldn't have been able to vocalize um, what I believed before because it was just so like deeply embedded in who I was. And now I'm able to see that it was wrong 
and I'm able to lay the groundwork for new beliefs and new ways of relating to myself and my emotions. Second question, what created energy this year? And I answered mine a little bit differently than he answered his. Um, and I'll go ahead and link to his post on this as well, because I think it's really helpful to be able to read it from the person who came up with the questions. Um, but I just said, what created energy for me this year was learning new skills like video editing, having time to think new thoughts. I, for the past few years, um, basically since the pandemic, but maybe even before then, I just feel like I've had no time to think. It's just always running to catch up to the next thing. And this year I actually was able to have time to think and read and ponder. Really, I don't remember doing that very much since I was a kid and it's made a huge difference. A three, what drained energy this year? And then, you know, having a plan to address it as well. So the things that I said drained my energy this year were meetings, um, emotional upheaval and uncertainty regarding work and income. I feel like the plan to address those is fairly personal, so I'm not going to cover that, but those are kind of the things that I feel like really drained my energy and put me off track from where I wanted to be this year. And so, um, hopefully in the next year, we'll be able to make some plans to address those things Four, who were the boat anchors in my life. And he describes boat anchors as people who are kind of holding you down or holding you back. And he, he describes it much better. And obviously I'm not going to name those <laughs> on a video. That would be weird. Um, but really, honestly, I feel, feel like the biggest boat anchor for me this year, because I do a pretty good job of protecting myself from other people who might be negative or try to make me feel bad about myself. I am one of the worst boat anchors for myself. I diminish my own accomplishments and I create a negative and pessimistic environment for myself a lot of days. And so that's, that was definitely something kind of eye opening to think about. Cause I started answering that question by looking at, um, the people outside. And certainly there are people who are not me that have that effect on me, but probably the biggest culprit for that for me this year was myself. Five, what did I not do because of fear? There are several things here. I don't know if I want to admit to them on a video. Like three of these four are relationship based. They're based in my lack of willingness to be vulnerable and to kind of put myself out there for a friendship or for a professional reason. And because I didn't want people to think less of me or see me as needy. So that's definitely something I would like to change. I, I would like to be more fearless when it comes to being vulnerable with people, not because it doesn't come back to bite you ever, because it certainly does sometimes, but because that's the kind of person I want to be is the person that believes the best in people and allows them to get close well, even though I know that there's always a chance that it may not work out. Um, because if I don't take that chance, then I miss out on the friendships where it is going to work out. So, and then the other thing is just like, I have procrastinated. And this is not just this year, but like I procrastinated on things that would like help me take care of myself, like scheduling appointments and things like that. Can you tell I was uncomfortable during that question? Okay. So number six is what were my greatest hits and worst misses this year. So I would say for my hits, uh, realizing that I needed to quit my job and doing it respectfully, um, getting a dog and working toward helping her be healthier and happier and having an amazing marriage that we both enjoy. Um, misses would be uh, feeling aimless and wallowing in it a little bit after quitting my job and not having a solid plan for how to recover lost income, which I should say here, like we are doing fine financially. I just, um, when I quit my job, we took a pay cut obviously because one of us is quitting our jobs and there's been a lot of stress on my end. Andrew isn't really putting this pressure on me, but I feel pressure to like try to make that up, but I don't necessarily have a solid plan for how to do that. And so uh, that's been a bit of a struggle here toward the end of this year is, yeah, me feeling like I'm not really doing enough for our family. And then I also just said like pushing people away when anxiety and stress are high. I'm an introvert and I also, uh, again, as we talked about earlier, I, I don't like being vulnerable necessarily. And so when I am already feeling very vulnerable and, um, you know, very stressed out, very anxious on the edge of depressed, I tend to push people away and cancel plans. And those are actually 
probably the times when I really need to lean into my support network. Honestly, just thinking about this, doing this personal review, I'm thinking, okay, I have something that I need to take back to my therapist and we need to talk about a plan for like how I'm going to work on that this year. Because I think that's a really important piece of living a good life is connecting with others. And that's not something I'm doing well right now, necessarily. I, I do in spurts, but um, it's not something that's a consistent part of my life because when I feel like it's too risky, I pull back. Okay. And then final question, what did I learn this year? I have a lot of things here. Actually, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things that I just listed off the top of my head. So that's pretty awesome. I don't know that you necessarily want to hear all of these. Um, so I'll just try to put some highlights. The first is that Andrew is my best friend and my biggest cheerleader, which like I already knew that kind of, but this year just really cemented that. And it's, it's just been a wonderful year with him. This one is <laughs> directly from my therapist and it's, um, you control what you can control and you surrender the rest. I am sure that I will continue learning this lesson throughout 2024. Um, but that is something it's like a mantra that I say to myself several times a day now, because I have a really bad habit of when something goes differently than I expected, like trying to reverse engineer and going like, Oh, well, I should have known that. And so then I should have done this and blah, 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 blah. And really I made the best decision that I could in most cases. And by the time something goes, not as expected, you can't control what happened in the past anymore. Um, so you just surrender the rest and it has really helped me take things a lot less seriously. And, you know, regardless of the outcome, I know that God is good. And so it's not probably going to be the end of the world. Another thing that I'm really glad that I learned this year is, um, I figured out a way to journal slash record random thoughts that works for me, um, which is not a method that I've ever heard mentioned by other people before. It's my idea diary which I would love to do an episode on that in the future, but it kind of, it's not like regular journaling where people are like, oh yeah, I record what happens to me every day and it's great. And, um, you know, I do have a journal and I use that when I need to do some reflection. Um, something like this might happen in my journal, although I just did it in my planner because I figured that's where I'll be implementing a lot of these changes. I feel like Journaling for me is very sporadic, but my idea diary is just every time I have something that I think, oh, that's good, or I want to, you know, remember it for some reason, like down the line, or I just think it's insightful or cool for whatever reason, I write it down in there. And I've been able to do that for months sustainably. I guess I'm giving away the whole content of the episode basically. And that's why I haven't done an episode on it yet because I don't really know how to explain it to somebody else in a way that would make sense and make you figure out if that's something you could do. So I probably will do that down the line, but I'm going to give myself a little bit more time to figure that out. But anyway, I'm really glad that I figured out that that works and I gave myself the freedom to try it. Uh, because for me on that particular task, adhering to a really strict schedule just wasn't working. Okay. So that's a few of the things that I talked about in my personal annual review. And this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. And I would say this was a really cool process. I think next year I might take these questions and tweak them a little bit, kind of make my own process. Um, but for a starting point, I thought this was really good. Like I said, you know, as I'm kind of processing through things on this video, um, I can already see a couple of themes in this list that I'm going to be able to take back to my therapist and take back to like myself as I'm planning um, for the year ahead and figure out how I want to improve on the momentum I already have and how I want to address the issues that I'm spotting here. All in all, I think that was a really good experience. I will go ahead and link to that uh, tutorial for lack of a better word from Sahil Bloom. And I'm really grateful to him for providing that. It came into my inbox right when I needed it. And um, I know that this is New Year's Day when this video is being released. So you're going to be watching it in the new year, but I would say whatever time you're coming across this video, if you wanna do it right now, just do it. Like reflect on your past year um, so that you have that knowledge of yourself and you are able to go forward with a lot more intentionality and purpose. So happy new year and I'll see you in the next video.